Good morning. So today's talk about education, I'll give a little bit of background on us. So we're a design agency, as she explained, and we don't have a background in education, but we've been very, very involved in education the last years. And we work with a variety of companies. We think about things differently. We look to design to solve problems. So what does this have to do with today's conversation about transforming education? Actually, it has a lot to do with it. Um, about five years ago, we started to actually go to some of our neighborhood schools when some companies would come to us and say, hey, what's the next big idea? How do I make my product line better? How do I make it more relevant for today? So we said, hey, let's go out and talk to 10-year-olds, to 14-year-olds. We formed a really strong alliance with some schools. And it got to a point where they said, hey, you know what? We are benefiting so much from this. Our students love it. We want you to come back and really talk to them and take them through the entire design process. What's really interesting is that they got it because design is actually used every single day. Design as a methodology is used every day. Our basic objects are design, and a lot of design thought went into them to solve common everyday problems, from the paper clip to the chair that you sit in. Design was critical to make those objects perform. So you ask yourself, why isn't design taught in schools? Why is it just thrown as this kind of bucket of art and the deco and treatment and graphics? It's so critical to a point where our shiny objects say, hey, this is where this product was designed. It has meaning. Um, so we, we, we bring students into our process. We ask them to rethink everyday problems through the process of design, we call it design thinking. And, and this problem solving skill is a very creative way to get to this solution. And I'm going to kind of walk you through a very high level kind of what we do with them. And these are things that we do every single day and a very, very useful process to walk them through. So we, we define a problem, right? Every day we have to define, like, what is the problem? We research the problem. We ask people that we know, friends, family, um, people in the area. We analyze it. We ideate. We think about what are the solutions. We prototype. We use our hands. We actually make things. And then we f refine it, we make it better, we validate it, and we implement the solution. So we do this with children, we do this with students, we do this with schools. I'm going to share with you a project that we did called Tools at Schools, um, which was a really amazing process. We had great partners to also support it. And what it was was about, we took 45 students from the eighth grade, and we had them rethink their classroom. Rethink the classroom of the future. You sit on these objects every single day. I'm sure you have a point of view on the chair, I'm sure you have a point of view on the locker and the point of view on the desk. And they did. In the beginning, of course, everybody wanted to work on the chair. Nobody liked to work on the locker. Um, but it was very interesting how that actually ended up. But um, we got them to really think creatively. And the results were pretty, pretty amazing. We start off all of our projects with a kit. This is a kit. We can all introduce a kit into our classroom. Nothing special here. We've got paper, glue sticks, crayons, markers, some paper. Um, paper's critical. Get them writing, making, doing. Then we, we team them up in groups. We actually create the groups. We get them used to working with people that they don't like, because we do that every day. You have to get used to that very quickly. You get to, you get to learn how to work with people's different personalities how to get to work with, hey, my, my partner didn't show up today. What am I going to do? Well, you're going to have to do that role for them for now. We get them to start thinking about problems and creating solutions. We give them very simple templates, right? Everybody loves a template to start off on. Um, this actually becomes almost like they're, they're kind of, you know, something they never let go of throughout the entire process, but it allows you to formulate your ideas and opinions and get you to write them down on a piece of paper. And then they start. They start working together, start thinking through ideas. They start really coming up with what is, what, what are we trying to solve for here? And every, every group had a different object, right? So there are some, the cheer group, we had the locker group, and we had the desk group. And they were to come up with a better product, to make things better, which is what this was about. We had them create mood boards. We do this every day. Don't just write your idea, visualize them. What's out there? What's going on? What is, what is the competitive landscape? What are you dealing with? And at the same time, tell us what's wrong with it. Every single group, no matter what the product was, they kept saying, it's boring. 
Our products are boring. We need bigger spaces. Um, we have now a laptop. We have a notebook. We have all these things, but we have no surfaces for them. So great insights, right? You put them together, great insights. But now, for all these problems, and everybody loves to talk about problems, and in particular 14-year-olds, you've got to provide a solution. So these, the solution column was empty for a few weeks, right? Because, hey, we read all our problems, but you know what? We worked with the teachers to get the students to think through those problems. Let's think about a solution. How do you solve for boring? Color, they started to talk about that. Materials, writable surfaces. All of a sudden, they had a lot of ideas to solve for this boring aspect. Um, they, had, they talked about the fact that, hey, it's really difficult to move our, our desks around. Should we put wheels on them? We have all these things. We've got these big laptops. We have bags. Are there enough hooks? So they started to really think through all of the problems. And for every single problem, you are forced to provide a solution. Otherwise, it doesn't get on this board. And they did that and edit them and think about the, the problems that are the most important that you're going to solve for because we can't solve for everything. And this process allowed them to formulate a big idea. Critical, right? We do that every day in our jobs. If we can't articulate what the big idea is in a very simple way, can't go forward. So we ask the students, hey, you know what? You have to present to me your big idea. You've got a ver this amount of room. Some students started to form riddles. Some of them told us a story about you know, creativity and modularity meet, and they come up with a product called functionality. Great. It's a great way to think about what, what it was that story, a story so important to coming up with a big idea. We forget about that in schools. We're not really asked to provide a narrative for our ideas, but we do when we work, right? We have to support, and we have to back up our big ideas. And then we ask students to present it. This is a skill that there are not many classes for. Nobody really asks you to stand up, present, and back up your idea. A lot of things that Tony was talking about. So here we are in a classroom with your group, and you're going to talk to us about your idea, and you're going to feel really confident about it. And we do a design crit. So we bring people from our office into the classroom, because a lot of this is about bringing the outside in shake it up a little bit, and talk about it. So, hey, tell us what your big idea is. Organization is key. Okay, how are you going to solve for organization? Walk us through that. Because in a little bit, you're going to start having to give form and shape to this product. And they started to weave into their classes. They started thinking about scale, about what units they're going to use. The math teacher started to talk to us and started to say, hey, I want to share with you, what, you know, what we're thinking about from a scale perspective, from proportions perspective. Some of them even did sketches. We were not looking for them to be designers. We just wanted them to think through the process and go through the process because it's critical. It's critical to every day. And they started to come up with these prototypes which is so important to put everything aside and start to make. And it wasn't important what it looked like, but it was important the thought process behind it. You know, the, the locker troop, the group talked about public space and private space and the important to separate the two. And the themes that emerged from these conversations were huge, real life themes. They interacted with these objects every single day. And now they had a point of view about them and they were passionate about them. And they had solutions for how to make these products better. This one picture that you see all the way at the bottom here, one, on, one team had a, a, an entire solution for accessories, snap-on accessories, depending on what class you had. There was a solution for that, and they thought through them, and they made them. And it wasn't so important, as you can see here. It was just about to get the idea out. Take time out, make it get the idea out, a writable surface. And what emerged to all the faculty was that every single, almost every idea had a writable surface on it because our, our, our students don't get to write as often as they want to. So here you have a chalkboard as your desk. Pipe cleaners, why not? Very simple. Doesn't need, you don't have to have a 3D printer in every classroom to actually make things. So really important to get them to think about how this can, can take shape and form. That's really important to start to validate your idea. Again, really going back to taking the, the students through a process that we deal with every single day. And here's a closer shot at this prototype. Again, really interesting to see how they thought about the details. We have cups. We bring in water with us. We don't have a place to put it. And again, in a group setting and, and, and really being able to, 
stand up and articulate. Um, all of these skills allowing for them to really challenge the obvious, to think about what could be done, and think about how do we make things better. And ultimately, we worked with the students to, to bring these products to life. So what you see behind me is actually the end solution of one of the products. So they worked with us to really think through, okay, a desk should have a modularity system, a docking station that you can actually dock in what you need, whether it's for art, whether it's for science, whether it's for English, and really think through all those details. And these were all their ideas that were brought to life. Even the locker, the category, and the product that nobody wanted to work on. Right? These are the students that came to us and said, oh, I don't want to work on the locker, that's so boring. Well, you know what? You turned it around, you made it not boring. The locker takes up more real estate in the hallway than any of these objects. Why not use that real estate and make something beautiful, make something that functions? Bring in all the elements that you're longing for. And at the end, which was the biggest reward, was getting to present it. And here you have the students at the International Furniture Fair in New York, and we had a great partner, Bernard Design, who brought these products to life, who saw this project, listened to these students and said, this is too good to not prototype. This is too good to not let the world see how valuable it is to bring students into this process at an early age, at the age of 14, to get them to start thinking through ideas, to get them to start thinking about your everyday objects and pose the questions, provoke, can this be made better? Was this done right? What could I do? And get them to present it. So the students actually walked journalists and the press through their ideas. They told them why my idea is such a good idea, why I thought about these details and why they matter. And it was an amazing experience that got them very excited about industry, about real world, and got them thinking very early on, what, what is it that I want to do that gets me excited? And it wasn't so important about, you know, we're not looking for students to become designers, but it's really about you know, the process, not so important with the end product. It's about being exposed and how you get there. And at the same time, really thinking through all of these products that are out there. You know, it's really important. We have a responsibility to make things better, do less, but what we do make it better. And it's really important that we start to bring this in now because we deal with that every day. And the workforce is really changing. Companies are asking for us to think about these things. And again, there are no classes that do that unless we start to integrate it into the curriculum. And this program can be scaled up or down, of course. But the most critical part is really bringing the outside in, looking into the community. There are a lot of corporations that are really interested to come in and talk and work, the student, work with the students through this. Um, and we've done this through a variety of ways. Um, we've, we've had students come over to the office. We actually do get them to do some 3D printing. And um, I think the big thing is really getting them to make and to, and, and to get things done and think through it. But at the same time, get the faculty involved as critical. We also did innovation workshops with the faculty and have them rethink what homework is, rethink the lunch experience. This is not always about a product. It could be a service. We all have problems that we face within our environments. It's very easy to just pick one and go through it, redefine it. Um, and when the faculty does it, I can tell you everybody gets excited. When you really have to think about how to make that lunch experience a better one, it's exciting. And then you're part of this process. You put something forward. You're part of the change, and it's holistic. And what was really interesting through all of this is you know, hearing the students at the end when they're asked, so what did you guys get out of this? You know, one very important, I mean, probably the most important, statement was, this, is, this was the first time we get to apply our learnings. This is the first time we actually get to take what we learn in class and put it into action. So why is that such a rare thing? So we continue to do this with, with students. And you know, today is really about being able to spread that, right? Because we are just one company and one group of people. And there's only so much that we can do. But it's really about how you can start to affect this change. And the key to success that we've learned about implementing this in the classroom is that you have to create a competitive atmosphere. Um, in all the cases that we've done this, when, there was, when it was competitive and people felt that amongst their, their peers, you got the best results out of this. You have to diversify the topics. Make sure that when you pick a topic, it's something that's relevant to them. It's something that they get excited about. It's something that they can start to pick apart. Um, and at the same time, look for real-world awareness. 
at, while linking it to bringing the outside in. If you can find a partner that can actually prototype some of these systems or services, or even on a very small scale, the product, it really means something when you actually have a tangible object that's a result of your thinking that you can actually hold up and be proud of and you can talk about. And when you do all of this together is really when it comes out in, in its strongest expression. But again, this is not so much about just you know, one company, one initiative. This is something that's very easily can be implemented in your backyard, teaming up with the community, teaming up with design studios, teaming up with corporations. There are a lot of people who are very interested and can come in. And I think that's what makes this really exciting. So the next steps is really up to you. But I think we've demonstrated that it's, it's, it is very easily executable. So I look to you to continue it on. Thank you.